so yeah i just like looking for patterns i've i've been that way my whole life i didn't know it i didn't know what that what what it was but i've been that way my whole life growing up i just i had no it's like just normal to me <clears throat> i don't know if anybody else is like that but uh I was seeing patterns in the uh, Bible before the internet. I'd say, well, wait a minute. Galatians and Ephesians are, I mean, uh, Ephesians and Colossians are pretty much the same, exact same thing. Chapter 1 talks about praying for your uh, spiritual growth, right? He says the exact, almost the exact same prayer in Colossians 1 and Ephesians 1. I'm pretty sure it's the same. It might be Ephesians 1 and Colossians 3 or something like that. But anyway, there's a verse in there. It's almost the exact same prayer. It's worded different, but... I need to look that up and verify it. I'll post it. If, if I upload this, I'll post it. But then, you know, I saw patterns, but that was before, before I saw the Shekinah Glory. But then, when I saw the Shekinah Glory, God downloaded all these patterns. And, uh, Because I was just, I was saying something's not right. Because everybody I was talking to was just going about their business in the simulation, complaining and crying and throwing a fit and fighting each other and complaining. You know, I'm talking, I'm about save and unsaved people. They were always <coughs> saved and unsaved. They're always fighting with each other. And denominations fighting against each other I was saying Lord what's going on and he said it's right in front of you and I still scratch my head this is why it's, this is why I say it's hard to figure out in the in the energy of the flesh because I'm still cr scratching my head saying Lord what was going on six months later he said the same thing it is right in front of you and I thought what does that mean I just couldn't figure it out in the energy of the flesh, and, you know, and without God revealing it, uh, I don't, I'd have never figured it out. The red versus the blue, the black, white, and the red, the, the uh, fractal hologram. The, I, I remember listening to uh, Chuck Misler, and Misler saying the Bible was a hologram, holographic, or a hologram, and I just, I. I said, I'm not listening to this anymore. I was even fighting against it. Just like other people who hear me, they fight against it. I'll let you understand, because you can't understand this in the flesh mind. It's hard to believe. <clears throat> it's just hard to believe. <clears throat> because everything around you, think about it, everything around you is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's a sacrificial redemptive system and you're gonna to have to sacrifice to get anything done to accomplish anything. But most people don't wanna sacrifice and they want you to sacrifice. And that's why I say about the drug heads, I notice patterns in the drug heads. They gaslight, they're liars, they're lazy. They're lazy. They want to vampire off other people. They want to. They want to pull you into their world. They don't care. They don't care how they make money. They they want to make money off of you anyway, any way they can. Pull you into drugs and uh, delusions and fake reality to buy them another another hit or whatever. Eventually what happens is they probably get tired of the drug and they say, well, I'll just be a drug dealer, you know. That's probably what they end up doing, but they've destroyed their mind so much that I mean, 
you think about it, Joe Rogan's pretty much a drug dealer. <laughs> Trying to promote drugs, yeah. <clears throat> your icon, your your USA icon, Joe Rogan, is not a is not a uh, person to follow. At all. He's not an icon to follow. None of these icon iconic figures are who is it? David Ike. David Ike is not iconic. And you, if, if they reject Jesus, they're not iconic. Your whole system, your whole system is, is uh, idolatry. When you really wake up to the fact, disconnect from the world long enough, and then you go back into it, you really wake up to the fact that everybody's worshiping something. They worship how they make food. They worship their food. If they can prepare a good meal, they worship, They want you to worship that. If they uh, can do good artwork, they want you to worship. The system wants you to worship something. And when you disconnect from it, it's all. it keeps, whether it's through social media, somebody talking, there's always something or somebody trying to pull you, trying to find out what is your pull. And when you have no pull down here, when you're disconnected from this whole place, you would think that they would stop, but they don't stop. They keep trying to throw stuff in your face, in your ear gate, eye gate, trying to pull you in. Have you ever noticed in the restaurants, the music is really old music and they just keep replaying it all the time, over and over? It's to get you to live in the past. to get you to live in some kind of memory down here. They want you stuck in the, uh, in the memory of the past or whatever you want to call it. Try it for a week. I know it's hard. I've done it for 10 years. Try it for a week. Disconnect from While you're in this place, disconnect from it. Disconnect from this place while you're in it. If you try it for a week, disconnect from their music, from the TV, from your family upbringing, from your conditioning, your cultured conditioning, your family conditioning, your, your corporate conditioning. You're being conditioned, your uh, church condition. You're being conditioned at every at, at every turn. And if you can disconnect from it just for a week, maybe, seven days, maybe you can break free, but most people will never break free. Because you're rubbing shoulders with people who get their identity in this idolatry system. And when you're rubbing shoulders with them, if you notice, most people are Every time you talk to them, it's like fake, and they're building themselves up, you know. It's, and it's always, if you do some, if you say something, yeah, I'm doing this. They they come back, they either say, yeah, I'm doing this, or they want to vampire off of whatever you're doing. There's like two kind of people. You talk about, oh, I'm I'm remodeling this. Yeah, I'm doing this. I'm re, I'm remodeling this. Or they say. Uh, you got a place for me? They're the first thing out of their mouth. Not interested in what you're doing. It's either competition or vampire. They're not interested. They're, it's either competition or vampire. It's not a real conversation. Every time.
I have not had anybody talk to me about well, where are you getting your material from or how are you painting that or what made, what made you decide to do that or how are you doing this or uh, have you thought about this idea or you know it's always like competition or if they need if they need a place to go can I stay there if they can't vampire off of you it's competition if there's boundaries there's a few people one or two or three in the real world that you can talk to back and forth throw ideas back but most of the time it's competition and most of the time it's about me 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 I try to learn from, if, if somebody's doing something that I've never done I try to learn from them you know I observe and I watch and I listen and I see how they think and how they're doing things different or better or worse or whatever and I learn from it and yeah you if somebody's doing worse you can actually learn from that because you learn not to do it that way and you can see their results you know If you've ever been to college, you learn from your roommates, and you don't even know you're learning from your roommates. The way they function, you know. People fold their clothes different. People have systems that they, on a regular basis, they do different, you know. You don't learn from everybody. <clears throat> it's kind of a boring life, I think. Every conversation, every every action, every interaction, it's like you can learn from every situation.